Good morning, gang. Happy Monday. Well, <laughs> it's Monday. Let's put it that way. I don't know about how happy it is. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk lately about nuclear war. I mean, whether you're watching YouTube, the mainstream media, listening to the potato in chief, whatever, everything's nuclear, 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 Putin and tactical nuclear weapons, Biden calling for Armageddon, all this sort of stuff, right? Yeah, might not be as far-fetched as you guys think. And I'll tell you exactly why. It's the only stuff they have left. <laughs> think I'm kidding, okay? You know, it's funny because so many people, if you read the comments under articles or under videos, whatever it would be, I mean, there's, there's some truly stupid people, uh, not only in the civilian world, but in Washington. You know, comments like, oh, we should just let Russia and Ukraine keep fighting each other, yada, yada, yada. You know, they're just going to wear out all their weapons and, you know, use up all their ammunition and, and then they won't pose a threat anymore. And I just look at this and go, and you passed what, second grade? Okay. Here's the deal. Anybody have a guess how long, NATO, in order to be a NATO member, how much military weaponry you're required to have? How long do you think a war would last? I mean, how long World War II last? Four and a half years, thereabouts? You know, Civil War was about four years. Let's not even get into Iraq and Afghanistan in 20, okay? World War One was about four years, okay? Uh... Well, maybe not quite four years on World War One, but it's certainly longer than 30 days. All right, I'll give you that. That is the requirement for NATO. NATO requires its members to maintain stock of ammunition for 30 days worth of fighting. <laughs> I got enough ammo to fight for 30 days. Okay, I mean, granted, I'm not stockpiling ammunition for thousands of people, but yeah, making my point. Here's a good one. This came out over the weekend for from the German edition of Business Insider, okay? So respected news media, okay? They cited authorities from the defense industry and parliament stating that the German army, the Bundeswehr, has enough ammunition to last one or two days. That's it, okay? And then the German army goes, we surrender. That's it, right? No big deal, okay? Germany, wiped off the map. Putin, you have Germany now, took it two days. Okay. Why the hell fight, fight Ukraine? Fight Germany, it'd be over already. Been over February 26th. But this is the point. Now, I can't tell you how much other countries have in Europe, okay? But other speculative targets of Russia going after are the Baltics, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, or Poland, okay? Now, how much they have in the way of armament, I can't tell you. But you have to remember, Germany is the wealthiest country in Europe, okay? Just saying. And they got two days. Tops. So then everybody says, well, yeah, no big deal. What about, you know, the United States? We're fine. Right? Okay, let's see. Let's talk about our readiness here in the U.S. 80% uh, of Generation Z slash Millennials, prim primarily Gen Z at this point, aren't eligible to serve in the military from either criminal records, drugs, or obesity. And I got to think that stupidity's in there. They just can't figure out how to say that without offending people. Uh, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve that is supposed to have fuel for the military in case we need it for war efforts. Joe's using that to lower the prices at the pump. Million barrels a day or something like that he's kicking out. Yeah, okay. But let's take a look at the armament that the U.S. has, all right? Now, mind you, 
How much did we just leave in Afghanistan? What was it, $85 billion worth of stuff or whatever? If not more than that, I don't remember exactly what the figure was. But I mean, it was helicopters and rifles and you know, anti-tank weapons, you name it. Okay, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. I mean, what was it, the Taliban wound up the fourth or fifth strongest military in the world by what we left? <laughs> I mean, really. So, hey, let's get out of that, <clears throat> and let's go into, let's just start sending stuff to Ukraine. Like, we're getting anything out of Ukraine. I mean, the only thing we're going to get from Ukraine is never find out how crooked Hunter and Joe really are. Okay. But let's take a look at some of the things that we've sent to Ukraine. The supposedly, supposedly, $16.8 billion in military equipment so far, all right, that we've sent. Uh, we have sent the Ukrainians 8,500 Javelin missiles, okay? That's a third of our stockpile. You want to take a guess how long it'll take us to recoup that? Defense contractors make about 1,000 Javelins a year. So from what we've given Ukraine in seven months, it's going to take us eight and a half years to restore our stockpile. Just saying, okay? And if we've given a third, that means we've got about 17,000 left, okay? So eight and a half years to get back to the 25,000, which is our readiness, okay? Uh, you want to talk about these HIMARS? Those are the GPS-guided... Uh, rockets, the G GMLRS, okay, you know, these things shoot down a plane or whatever from 50 miles away, all right. Let's say we've sent them a third of what we have there, too. That would be somewhere between 8,000 and 10,000 of those, okay, just giving you that. Uh, how about just typical artillery shells? Let's look at that, you know, 155 millimeter shells. We've sent over 800,000 155 millimeter artillery shells to Ukraine already. Three quarters of all the artillery that is being used in Ukraine right now is being given given to them by the United States. Okay. How many do we produce there? Well, we produce about 14,000 shells a month. To get back those 800,000 shells... Five years. I'm not kidding you guys. This is it. Okay. This is what's going to. This is why I say, is nuclear war possible? Absolutely, because nobody else has anything. If Russia's out of personnel, out of military equipment, out of ammunition, what are they going to do? If Germany doesn't have, they haven't had, they've been so far behind being qualified to be in NATO for so long, it's unbelievable. Okay. Trump had it right. Everybody else starts paying their fair share or screw them. Okay. Germany never paid their fair share. The rest of Europe just goes, the United States will protect us. Let their taxpayers pay for it. Right? You and me. The United States, Joe Biden, pissing away our military. That's typical Democrats. They don't think we need a military. So, come on in. Doors open. <laughs> you know, invade us. You know, you can invade us with... I don't know, sombreros, or you can invade us with AK-47s. I guess it doesn't matter. But are those AK-47s going to be Russian or Chinese? Because notice who's not using any weaponry right now. Chinese aren't sending weaponry to Russia. The North Koreans have offered. Okay. Chinese aren't sending any weapons to anybody. They're not fighting in any war. They just continue to stockpile what they have. So let's say something blows up in Taiwan. We've sent a third of our weaponry to Ukraine. How much are we going to have to send to Taiwan? And then go, gee, the U.S. has nothing left. Hmm, Mexico City on up to... Brownsville, Texas, and here we are. Hi, I'm Chinese, and I want to come in the United States. Oh, you can't do that. I'm Border Patrol. Bang. <laughs> Done. Okay? This is it. 
the the only the only option literally that can be left for a lot of these countries is the nuclear option because they don't have anything left. I mean, this is it. If if being in NATO requires 30 days worth of ammunition and the recent wars, the big ones, have been four years long, what the hell are you going to do for the other three years and 11 months? You know, in the United States, we have a little advantage. We only have two borders, okay? Canada and Mexico. The other sides come from the oceans, right? You all know that. I don't need to tell you geography. But what's going to come from the ocean? Submarine missile, nuclear missile, this is it. There's a lot of talk about, is nuclear war coming? It's a lot more likely than people think, because... There's nothing else to fight with. I mean, what are you going to throw rocks at each other? That's all that's left, okay? I know it sucks, but it, it's, it's a dose of reality that people don't... Germany, Germany can't defend itself. Europe can't defend itself, other than using nuclear weapons, okay? Russia soon isn't going to be able to defend themselves. They're running out of manpower. They're running out of equipment, one thing they're going to have left is nuclear weapons. I mean, who knows? You know, the next superpower in the world could be the Congo, you know, because if Russia falls, if Europe falls, if the United States falls, which inevitably means Canada falls, okay, which probably also inevitably, inevitably means Australia fell, all that leaves is China. There's your great new world order. Everybody start learning to speak Mandarin. But if there's nuclear war back and forth, there's probably not a whole lot of targets there in Africa. Yeah. Gee, you know what? We're going to waste a nuclear missile on Mount Kilimanjaro. No. And so you're going to have, I don't know, a bunch of Swahili tribesmen being the new superpower of the world. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to freak anybody out. This is just the facts. It's really silly, but it's really real. This is what your government, I don't care if you're from Canada, the United States, Germany, France, Italy, Great Britain, Hungary, wherever, okay? This is the predicament your government has gotten us in. We're on our own, guys. Face it. If the Chinese come over the hill, the government ain't going to be there to help you. The military's not going to be there to help you. They may have the training, <laughs> but the only ones going to have any weapons is you and me. Pinball out.